Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about winterizing your irrigation system. This can save you hundreds of dollars if you do it yourself. There's just a few things you need and a few things you need to know how to do. So I live in the Northeast and we have to clean out our irrigation or evacuate the water from our system. We blow it out. There's three ways to do your system. You can manually or auto drain and you can blow it out. We blow it out. We think it's a better way to do it. And I, I like to just get all the water out of the system. All of it. We blow it out and dry the system out. You know, the Northeast, we use a polyethylene pipe, and it, it does flex and expand a little bit. And a lot of people are like, oh, that won't freeze. Yes, it will. It will freeze, and those pipes can rupture and split. Additionally, there's usually a copper uh, fitting or connection on the house. It's called a pressure vacuum breaker, and I call it a backflow preventer because it's designed by code, by plumbing code, to keep contaminants from the system entering back into the fresh water supply. That's made out of copper. If water is left in there or not drained properly, that can split or rupture, and it's a very costly repair. So you don't want to deal with that. So we blow our system up. And the way I do it is I use a compressor. I use my shop compressor. It's 33 gallons. It's an 80 to 100 CFM system. And that's plenty on an irrigation system with a 2-inch main line or less. And anything bigger than that, you want a bigger compressor but you also can use a smaller compressor, and I did for years. It just takes you longer, and you just have to cycle through it because the compressor needs to recover for, for the air velocity. So let's talk a little bit about connecting our compressor to the system, because that's where people get stumped. How do I do that? Well, I, there's two ways to do it on my system. I have a silcock, a hose bib, on either side of my backflow preventer, and I use a jig that I made, and it's basically a washing machine hose that I cut and I took a quick connector here, an air fitting connector, and a fitting that fits to it with a barbed fitting that goes into the hose. And then I used a pipe clamp. I got all of these things for probably less than $10 at the hardware store. And I made it in five minutes or less. In fact, I've made a dozen of these for all my friends. All my friends now blow their own systems out. Another way that you can do it is with a quick fitting and a, and a, uh, a double threaded connector and basically you thread right into one of the test cocks on the black backflow preventer. And then you use the valve on the test cock to let the air in and out of the system. Whereas on this particular thing, you actually use the silk cock or the hose bib valve to open and close to let air in and out of the system. All right, look, so now we're, we know what we need to do. We got a compressor, we're hooked up to the system, we've got our jigs ready to go. How do we blow out our system? I think of it in two ways. I use the backflow preventer or the pressure vacuum breaker as my divider. So I work from the main water line to the backflow preventer and then my second part is from the backflow preventer to my irrigation system. So I go into the house and I look for the water meter and I turn off the water to the irrigation system. Hopefully you have your own isolation valve or you know ball valve to shut off just the water to the irrigation. If not, you should. You also should have a way to drain the system, whether it's a, a hose bib or a, a, a drain plug or something like that. I take a bucket, I put it over my silcock, my hose bib, I turn it on, and a little bit of water will come up, but not all of it. I need to let some air into the system to completely evacuate that pipe. I go back to the pressure vacuum breaker, and I open, I open my silcock, but you could, if you don't have a silcock or a hose bib, you just open one of the test valves, the test cocks. That will let air into the system, it will drain, and water will evacuate from the pipe. When that's done, I turn it off in the basement, I take the hose, uh, the, the bucket, get rid of that, and now I go outside for part two. Now I'm looking at the backflow preventer to my irrigation system. Now I've got my compressor hooked up, I have it turned off so there's no air in the system yet, I turn on my compressor, charge it up, and I go and I turn on one of my sprinkler valves on the control panel. I usually pick the highest for the zone away. It's got the most water in the line. Once that's on, then I slowly open the valve, whether I'm turning the hose bib or I'm turning the test cock to allow air into the system. It's important that you do not run the compressor into the system with closed valves. You can damage the valve gates. So you want the valve open, let the air in, evacuate that zone. You'll see the water come out of the sprinkle heads, and when the water is done, you'll see a little bit of mist, and sometimes the heads will even close. When that's done, I close the valve, I let my compressor charge up, I change zones to the next zone, and then I repeat the process until I've worked my way all the way through all of my zones. When I'm completely satisfied, I do that two or three times to make sure the pipes are completely empty. 
And with a, sm a smaller compressor, you may have to do that more. When I'm completely satisfied, I disconnect the compressor, let the air come out of the system. And then what I do is I open all of those test cocks and make sure that the, there's no water in them. And I work the isolation valves on the backflow preventer. And then the final step is to leave them slightly open or half open. So parallel with the pipe is open, perpendicular pipe is closed. I leave them at 45 degrees for the winter. Any water in that valve will drain down into the pipe and it will be, it won't matter at that point, it will be drops. But you want to make sure that valve is open. It's that simple, folks. You can do this yourself. You can save yourself a ton of money. You could put these together for a few dollars. If you own a compressor, you're good to go. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you at the next how-to. Take care.